Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Vikings fans everywhere. This is Justin with Purple and Gold for days. I have Jade with Sports and Stars with Jade. She is sitting in for Dave tonight. And yeah. boy, we don't have any uh we don't have anything to talk about that might have just happened a couple of days ago. Not Thank at all. Thank you everybody for joining us here. We very much appreciate it. JV's already in the house. JV hey, is, JV, what's up? Just Vibe wins the uh the prize of being the first one on there. So nice. Hi, hi, Chicago hi. Bears fan there, JV. Uh, hey, in the chat, watching mm -hmm. it, we don't care. Dave, thanks for joining us. Very much appreciate it. Hey, if, you, if you do not already subscribe to Minnesota Sports Talk, please do. If you do not already subscribe to Jane's uh, YouTube channel, that is, again, Sports and Stars with Jade, please do so as well. Thank and you. Shame, shameless plug, if you don't already subscribe to Berlin Gold for days, why not? Yeah. Sneaky, sneaky. What's up? Second time Sneaky Pop-Tart. I love that name. I know. That's hilarious. <laughs> All right, Jade. Vikings. Uh, they Here we quite, are. They didn't quite clinch that division against the lowly Detroit Lions, but hey, no. they're in second place. The Packers and Bears are not. Uh, what's good, Dave? I don't know. Well, well, maybe we can find something good here today. Jay, give us your quick, quick brief rundown of the monstrosity that was that performance on Sunday. Well, yeah, monstrosity. Yeah, disaster in Detroit. Definitely just difficult to watch. Game in Detroit. Um, but can I say I'm completely surprised by it? No. 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 <laughs> definitely not surprised by it. Here we are again. As I like to say, oftentimes we're stuck in purple purgatory with this team, it seems like. But, I mean, we just got outplayed. And I think that on Sunday especially, you could have just flipped the, you know, the records on the teams and they caught, probably could have been a little bit more reflective of how it seemed that the game went. It just didn't seem like the Vikings were prepared. And honestly, at this point, if you had to put – or if I had to put like pseudo blame on anybody, I think it was really Kevin O'Connell head coach, not having the team co collectively prepared. Now I like Kevin O'Connell. Don't get me wrong. I like what he's done this far, but you know, what do you do when you face adversity? Here's a really good challenge for you, but they just, they were all played. The Detroit lions wanted it more and they were on They're They're a good team too. Don't get me wrong. Like, I mentioned last year that I thought that the Lions were going to be the sleepers of the NFC North. And then I was like, oh, man, I was way off with the way that they started. But they seem to have a tra trajectory forward. And they're a great team. And they came to play. And, yeah, they showed up. And Vikings just overall a mess. I mean, we can definitely nitpick. I'm sure we will. But, yeah. And everybody's coming for, you know, Ed Donatel at this point. But it's like, no. I think we need to just look at this as a collective unit right now. And just, you know, yeah, defense is an issue, sure. But people are so quick to per pull the pitchfork out, you know, at yeah. Donatel at this point. But not good. I said this in my rant. Um, and thank you, JV, the one time you were rooting for the Vikings. Oh, yeah, man, you know, JV, of course we let you down. JV, here's the deal. The Vikings play like they expected to lose. Well, I'm going to get to actually JV's second point in a second. Here's the thing. When the Vikings have no expectations on them, they always overachieve yeah. relative to their expectations. That's and when they that. have expectations, they always underachieve. Relative they, yeah, to they can't ever live up to the pressure. They can't. Right. They can't do it. <laughs> They're too soft, too. And I mentioned that. And, like, I'm not the first one to mention that, you know. But that's kind of how it is. And the Lions, too, they, got, they have a lot of grit. So it's like, you know, the Vikings just need their hair ruffled up a little bit or, you know, a little dirt mm -hmm. on them or something. I don't know. Like, to put it in that sort of perspective, I don't know. What's up, McAndrews? Thanks for joining us. What's we up? appreciate it. So mm -hmm. on my opening salvo right after the game, the first thing I said was, I'm not letting Ed Donatel off the hook. I'm not letting the defensive sure. players off the hook. Yeah. What did you call them? The uh, the, uh, the, the nursing guys. home. The nursing home, yes. I'm gonna, <laughs> I, I forgot the line, and I didn't go with it at the time, but it's a, it's a great line. <laughs> it's hilarious. Feel free to spread it around. And it's then Harrison weird. Smith and Eric Kendricks are the Babysitter's Club. Missing Harrison Smith as well. He was mm -hmm. clearly missed, I believe, too. What's up, Julian? Thanks Julian, for joining what's us. Up? We appreciate you. Yeah. Here's what I'm going to say. The defense was trash. Ed Donatel yeah. has been trash play calling, and it's been going on pretty much the whole season, but right. in particular the last five games where you've given up 400-plus yards and four out of those games has been 450-plus yards, okay. Yikes. The main reason they lost for me, and Jade, I can't believe that somebody actually is close to having my opinion, Kevin O'Connell. Yeah. Kevin, 
he outsmarted himself so many times. And at the end of it, yeah, we can talk about Ed Donatel and his play calling and everything else. Kevin that's been going on too, you know. Kevin O'Connell's the head coach. He mm-hmm. is allowed to tell one of his subordinates, this crap ain't working. It's not working. Not gonna work here. Not, yeah. Not gonna not gonna work here, ladies and gentlemen. So mm-hmm. go to your guy and say, okay, this doesn't work. We need to find mm-hmm. something that does, or we need to make, make Let's some really make those adjustments. Cause he's right. been good at making adjustments during the game, especially, you know, offensively that I've noticed. So mm-hmm. it's like, dude, I think you got it in him. So again, I think it's a good test for Kevin O'Connell. And I think just overall, I think this season for him as rookie head coach, I think collectively it's a win, you know, already, you know, I think for him. So, you know, overall, but again, you really, these are the times now, these are the testing times. And it's like, you don't want the Vikings to lose momentum and just kind of start riding or coasting Mm -hmm. right now, just because we do have a buffer and because you don't want that going into the playoffs. Correct. Right? You want to be uh, you want to be on the ascending, not the descending. You right. Want to be exactly. Crescendoing up, not down. Crescendoing upwards. Yes. So here's what I was going to say about O'Connell. That yeah. fourth down play in the first quarter. I like aggressiveness, but I like it in certain situations, not that early on in the game where you know your defense is the weakness of your team. Right. Like, what in the it's world like were you they, thinking? It's like a good thought, but they can't execute it. Like, good thought, good attention. You know, I like the aggressiveness, but can't follow through. Don't do it. Second, what the heck are you yeah. doing calling a jump pass from Dalvin Cook? <laughs> in the red zone at the end of the first half, where even though – and I'll say it at this point, the defense hadn't been that bad as of yet. It was They only given up 14 points. They seven usually of those, start to really go down like slightly right before halftime. Seven of those points came off of that botched fourth down play. The other seven came off of really long punt return. But since those two drives, they had forced a couple of punts. They had gotten yeah. a fourth down stop, and they yeah. had gotten a three and out. They did start off well. They did. Just and that's, keep it simple. Yeah, but that's a problem, too, with the nursing home. You know, yes. they're quote-unquote rather – and they're not even old. Don't get me wrong. But, like, right. for, you know, player standards, they're quote-unquote old. So they start to get tired out. We don't have a lot of depth either. And I think Zadarius Smith is maybe a little injured right now. But, yeah, that Dalvin Cook thing. Okay, and weirdly enough, too, okay, on my stream on Sunday during the game – Early on, I had just like a premonition come flying in, and I said it. I have to go back and really find the timestamp. But mm-hmm. I was like, Dalvin Cook, I, I okay. I was like, you guys, I don't even want to put this out there, but I got to share. I have a feeling Dalvin Cook's going to fumble today. I don't know why. Yeah. It just came flying in. And then like an hour to. later, it happened, and I was like, oh, you know, I'm like, damn it. Not Who else going to be at that game besides too. Who else going to be, be at this game? Julian says he's going to be Ooh. at that game, and uh, spoiler alert, so will I, but that's a whole other one. <gasps> there you go. Nice. What's up, okay, Summer? Well, What's I up, Summer? Win. How are you? Summer home, what up? Nice. Thanks, Thanks for, for joining, joining us. I got more chats. And see, this is one thing that rap hasn't quite taught me yet as to how to stay on topic and to keep talking and still managing these chats at the same right? time. Right? Yeah. It's like you need another arm going it, on yes, in there. It's, yeah. it's, like I need a, it's like I need a producer without me. But – Right. The, the third part of Kevin O'Connell that drives me nuts is he continuously tried running the ball when it was apparent where you have uh, 40% of your offensive line starters out with between right. Bradbury and Darisaw. Yeah. I, right. We can Same get into the discussion thing. as to whether Delvin Cook is truly cooked or if his offensive line is just garbage or somewhere in the middle. But I think a little both. At yep. some point, you've seen how Justin Jefferson has gone off. You've seen that TJ Hawkinson exactly. outside of his drop – and you know what? Thielen and KJ were involved as well. Yeah. I'm not saying they totally abandoned the running well. game. You do have more options, you know. Especially so I'm, not if, saying, I'm sorry. Oh, go yeah. Ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. I go wasn't going to say abandon the running game completely, but mm-hmm. you were running out of possessions. You were already down, and you know your defense can't stop anybody. Go away from that run a little bit sooner. So that was yeah. another example of where. I think Kevin O'Connell just he, – he, he didn't have his best performance, and I think the no. idea of Coach of the Year is pretty much gone at this point. But who knows? Yeah. I mean, unless there's an upward trajectory at this point, you know, they really get far into the playoffs. But I am so over trying to run Dalvin down the middle. Stop trying to make Dalvin happen. Stop. It's not working. Stop it. 
And I think maybe too, it kind of the pushing the run game. I think that is one place actually where we have some depth is that running back, but right. still, I think it might circle back to my little sneak sneaking suspicion that Kevin O'Connell knows Kirk Cousins ceiling. And I think he has pushed him to make throws and he has been successful at that, but other times, you know, it's Kirk still at the end of the day. still Kirk, right? So I think maybe that's why some of the time the run is pushed a little bit more as well. Cause there's depth there and maybe not a hundred percent trust in Kirk. I, I mean, hell, I don't think Kirk even trusts himself a hundred percent. I'll say this. And I've got a clip of some of cousins throws that we might get on the uh, screen here later where yeah. he, he, he didn't do what he typically does, which is he hung in there. He threw yeah. some balls into some tight windows, which is one of the things. He has been that, doing that more. And I think that that's part of Kevin O'Connell pushing him too, a little bit there. I which, hey, agree. it's working though. Do it more. I also more. agree with McAndrew's comment. I never say easy anymore. No, there is no such thing as an right. easy. Right, exactly. MTC yep. Prod, thanks for joining us. Uh, and your oh, dog yeah. on right that uh, up. JJ, JJ and, and Kirk, Kirk are carrying us. Totally well. carrying us. Yeah, I mean, JJ does have to get the ball thrown to him by somebody. But I think, too, that only gets you so far, right? Correct. But like we were saying, then you can spread it out. But I don't know if we're going to touch on this, but Adam Thielen, he needs to put a nook in his mouth there. That crybaby. <laughs> Not a good look, dude. He anyway. does need to stop throwing his he, hands up any time he doesn't uh, – Just knock it off, dude. He's ball. still a good player. Don't get me wrong, too, but – McAndrews brings up a good yeah. point that the Eagles had their hands full. Listen, it. Yep. One, the point. Eagles are playing on the road. Two, the Eagles are in a different class than the Vikings are. And I don't know. I didn't get to, to see much of that game. So, yes, you look at the final score and the fact that the Eagles had to come from behind a victory. You know, there's a point to be made there. But at the same time, to me, right now, the Eagles are rolling. The Eagles did what you're yeah. supposed to do, which is just blow the doors off of somebody. Damn Eagles. Ah. Yes. Seriously. Um, I also didn't like that onside kick at the end. What did you think? I think it was too early. I think that now before I, I don't, before I, I didn't necessarily you, hate it to be honest. I'm going to say it like this. I think with two timeouts aggressive. and the two minute warning, yeah. the onside kick is a two to 5% return on investment. That's if true. You, if you don't get it, the lions are right on the edge of field goal range to take you from one possession to two possession. I would understand if you only had one timeout or if it was like maybe two minutes and 15 seconds left on the clock. But the fact that you yeah. could get three plays before the two minute warning, I would have kicked it there and, and hoped that your defense gets to stop there. Maybe Penn but our Sewell defense keeps was it. struggling though. Well, right. True. You know? So yeah, that's a tough one to be honest, but yeah, continue on. Sorry to interrupt there. So ultimately, yeah, you, know, you think the Eagles and Cowboys are frauds. Well, I guess everybody's oh, frauds. Oh, JB. <laughs> JB made a little comment on Twitter, too, about a uh, uh, Kirk being a fraud or something like that. Or maybe our quarterback's just not that good. I liked it. It got quite a bit of likes. I saw that on Twitter, JB. <laughs> I was going to bring this up later, but he brings up. He says, oh, 49ers yes. Are the best team. 49ers, they are a good team for sure. I've been saying this since the post game that I did with SK. And it was after the Saints game in London. So after the double doink win. Oh, I said, yeah. <laughs> so, which seems like, so seems like a lifetime ago. ago. Yes. So indeed. crazy. The season I said flies it, by. I said it right then and there when we were talking about, you know, this team or that team. I said, they don't look it right now. But the team that I don't want to see is the San Francisco 49ers. And he kind of oh. questioned me. And I said, that 49ers offensive line and defensive line are still the best O-line, D-line combination out there. And the Vikings do not match up with teams that have good O-lines. And they sure don't match up against teams with good D-lines. And you get a team with both of them. Even with Jimmy Garoppolo as their quarterback, that's the one team I don't want to face. I'm not saying He's I even fear out. Them. He's out for the year. Right. Now, at the time, he had just oh, yeah, gotten back, back before. in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. He had just gotten back in. And, you know, frankly, yep. if they hadn't wasted a couple of games early in the season with Trey Lance, we might be looking up them. And part of the reason that yeah. this loss to the Lions really hurts us is they have the tiebreaker for the two seed against the Vikings if they face if they finish with the same record. So that margin of error of two games that we had going into last weekend has suddenly shrunk to now. Right? How quickly any talk it about yeah. any talk about resting players against Chicago unless the 49ers lose two games? Yeah, they're going to have to keep playing out that stress. So, I mean, that was a cute rest. thought. Resting players, yes. cute thought. And no. it is because they don't have a lot of room for error. They really don't. The Vikings don't have a lot of depth to circle back on that again. Oh, hey, Ryan. What's, what's going up, on? What's up, Ryan? Thanks Good for joining Ryan. us. We Thanks appreciate for stopping you. by. 
you don't already subscribe to Minnesota Sports Talk or Purple and Gold for Days, split hit that subscribe button to both of us, please. We very much appreciate you. But um, no snow for me as of yet. It's a lot of rain, but uh, possibly uh, snowing overnight. I, I don't know. What do you guys got up there? You don't have any snow yet, do you? Jade? Um, it was snowing. Yeah, it was. Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I will say this. The biggest thing the Vikings need to do is stay ahead of the 49. Yeah, that's exactly it. At the yeah, end of it, for sure. Um, mm-hmm. I, 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 I think it would be a 50, 50 game at us bank stadium in the divisional round of the playoffs against the 49ers. If it's in San Francisco, it's pack a lunch and it's probably not going to be anything more than a repeat of what 2019 was. That defensive yeah. line is still good. Um, their offensive they, line. They're, I mean, yeah, they're dangerous. They have two, they have a good defense. And then, you know, they add Christian McCaffrey, of course. And like, I forget who is, who is their starting quarterback now with Mr. Garoppolo Irrelevant, out. whatever his name is. Um, um, it's not Col- Uh, Is it a Colts? No, not um, anyway. Well, it doesn't matter, but yeah, I don't want to face them either. They're just the way that, who did they just play Tampa? Did yeah, they just, they just destroyed just Tampa. destroyed them. Yes. <laughs> I mean, yeah. So no, don't want to face them. But that's another thing too. Eventually, you're gonna have to face one of these teams you don't want to face. Yes. And yes. at this point, can the Vikings face like them, or maybe, or could they beat 49ers or Kansas City? Probably not. You know. Uh, Ryan, Julian, and JV got the answers for Brock. Purdy. Oh, Brock Purdy. There you go. Purdy, Thanks, guys. Purdy. Appreciate it. Mr. Pretty relevant, sure, yeah. Mr. Relevant, right now, pretty definitely. Sure he, Maybe pretty more sure he's him. being carried right now. But having said all that, back to to wrap up this Lions game. It's it's like this. I understand you didn't have two of your five offensive linemen. I understand you didn't have Harrison Smith. Mm-hmm. Do we really think that? Okay, yeah, Harrison Smith might have made a a, a little bit of a difference here or there. Might not sure. have gotten burned over the top of that. But if anybody yeah. wants to say that the only reason we lost this game is because of the absence of Harrison Smith back being in our secondary, I'm sorry. This defense just yeah. is what it is. It and is. What, mm-hmm. Especially J- the secondary. They did not sack Jared Goff once. Jared Goff is a statue no for Cousins. No pressures whatsoever. At some point, Ed Donatel, Kevin O'Connell, dial up a couple None. of questions. Exactly. And you forget that Daniel Hunter is on the team, which is sad half the time. You're like, oh, yeah, he's still here. That's right. I but like yeah. the idea of Daniel Hunter and Zadarius Smith. The problem is, is that one of them's great in 3-4 and the other one's great in 4-3, and you're trying to marry the two. So yeah. I, I don't know what to make of what adjustments can really be made at this point. We had a comment to right. ask this question. Oh, yeah, it was Dave. I'll, I'll throw you back up, Dave. I didn't forget you. What are your thoughts on Mike Pettin taking over the defensive plane, Colin? I'm going to say this. I think this it's too a, soon, to be honest. Ed Donatel will not be this team defensive coordinator next year. We, we all know that. But does making Mike Pettin the defensive coordinator with four games left really move the needle all that much, or would that just cause right. chaos? Jade, what do you think? I mean, I was, <clears throat> excuse me, I was on with uh, the Lioness later, lay, Lioness Lair the other night um, with Detroit Lions on the Prowl. Everybody go check that out if you haven't. But they kind of asked me about that too. And to be honest, I said, just keep Ed Donatel there. I go, you know, it's still his first year doing this as well with this team. I d- like you said, I don't think it'll make that big of a difference you know, or like you said, move the needle too too much if they did that. And it could cause more harm than good, you know. So I think just keep him there. And who knows, he might be back. Bring Zim back. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. What's up, Skull Mafia? Thanks for joining Skull us. Mafia, what's up? Mm-hmm. I'm going to say it like this. At some point, I understand you don't want to blitz every play because you're going to get burned. Sure. We're getting burned Every anyway. Time. We are getting yeah, burned anyway. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Once in a while, let's mix in some dialed up pressure, even if that means you get torched because you want to get shot in the head or do you want to die by 10,000 paper cuts? Because right now we're getting killed by 10,000 paper cuts. And no, honestly, that sounds awful. Honestly, that? even if you gave up a big play earlier on, so what? Then your offense right. is getting back on the field instead of the offense sitting there for five minutes at a time because the defense can't get a third down. Yeah, stop and the defense of all of both of them, they should not be on the field as much. If anything, the offense should be on the field more if possible. Bandino, right. thanks for uh, thanks for joining us. We Bandito, yes, goal, you. love that. Super, Super well, well, thanks for joining us. On? How are you this evening? Hey, Purple Gang, that's it. Hey. Julian, we're not quite there. Don't know. Uh, we'll get to that uh, towards Ooh, the end, but I'll, but I'll, but I'll mark yes. that one for later. 
All right. Circling back, let's talk about the offense a little bit more. You and I have both been what we would call Kirk Cousins doubters. We're not necessarily haters, but we would I would classify us as doubters here. I'm actually mm-hmm. going to put up some of his. Uh, I'm going to actually put up some of his plays here. Yeah. Uh, from the game on Sunday here, but talk to me. I know you you like to always you know rub Kirk Cousins a little bit, but that was a heck of a throw to TJ Hawkins in there. And prod. Yeah. Uh, what your basic thoughts on now? Watch this stepping up in the pocket and a nice throw to JJ there. But yeah, your thoughts a, on Kirk Cousins game this weekend? Yeah, I mean, he had a good game. I was, you know, I will always point out flaws with him for sure, but he has been playing better this year. However, I still think he's the same Kirk. But, you know, a lot of people did mention that, you know, a loss like this, these, you know, because what did he put up like 400 some yards or something? 425. Um, yeah, and that's a lot, you know. And he was getting hit a lot. He's been a lot more durable. He's getting hit way too much, too. That's never going to last either, right. which is an issue. Um, but, yeah, he had a good game. You can't necessarily be mad at him. I, I don't want him as the team's starting quarterback anymore. Um, if this could be his last year somehow, that hey, that's a win for me. But he was making the throws. But it's still, you know what? They, they didn't win. You know what? They didn't win. But overall, you can't necessarily blame him for the loss, per se. I do think that there are times where he doesn't show up. And I think at a certain point, too, maybe he is shining a little bit because it was pseudo over, you know, so it was a little bit more comfortable. I don't know. I'm really nitpicking there, but I'll shut up now. I'm going to say this. I think that there have been times where the Kirk Cousins stands will go out of their way to point out how everything else that there's always 10 things that you can say were bigger on or higher on the list of the reasons why the Vikings lost a game than Kirk. Always. Right. And right. realistically, if there were six things that went wrong, he was probably number three or four, but the Kirk Cousins stands would say he was, you know, seven or eight on the list this yeah. past Sunday. I'm going to have to say that this is one of those times where I won't argue with the stands that, he's not on the list of the reasons why they lost that game. Yes. That last touchdown to Osborne. Yeah. They were down 15, but you knew you had one or maybe two possessions left and they did come down and score on it. And it wasn't exactly like the lions were playing prevent defense. Frankly, that should have been a touchdown to JJ. Uh, But nevertheless, I will say this. And I just don't think he does enough for what he's paid. I mean, I know that people don't want to hear that anymore, but that's part of it. That's still part of it. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I was saying, Julian. So thank you for that. I agree with Super Bowl that uh, yeah. KJ Osborne just he is. Oh, I like just KJ. A guy. He's I like just him. a guy. I would like to see a little bit more from Jalen. I, I, I honestly so later. I prefer him over at this point. I prefer him over Adam Thielen. And I like both of them. Don't get me wrong. I like both of them. KJ I'll say that cry baby. I did though. a uh, I did a short last week about Jalen Rager. And what I said was is that okay, we yeah. can't over, we can't overreact to the six catches that he's had and how they've gone a lot of them have gone for big plays. But what I w- did say was you have outside of JJ, you have about 100 combined snaps a game for your wide receivers 2 through 4. It should yeah. not be 60 for Thielen, 35 for KJ and 5 for Jalen Rager as far as snaps go. Take seven to ten away from KJ. Take five to seven away from Adam Thielen outside of the red zone. Obviously, in the red zone, Thielen is still magnificent. But do you, am I am I crazy to say that he needs to take a few snaps away from KJ and Thielen to get him on the field a little bit more to say, you know, maybe we got something in this guy that we traded some picks for, or do you think I'm off my rocker? Okay, I'm I'm so sorry. I was like mid sneeze right there. Are, you're talking about KJ. I'm saying, is it crazy of an idea to take five, seven to twelve snaps away from Osborne and maybe five to seven snaps away from Adam Thielen to get a little bit more of uh, Jalen Rager on the field? Oh yeah, no, I, I don't think that's outlandish. Yeah, that's right, Jalen Rager. You were talking about. Sorry, I just yeah. had to like mute and sneeze there. Yeah, no, because Jalen Rager, you know, we haven't seen a lot in the last couple of games. He's been, he's been all right, right? There's been a little something, something there. I don't think that's outlandish at all, especially where they're at right now. I mean, why not try it, right? Why not try it a little bit more? But I think, too, it kind of it goes back to Kirk. Are you comfortable throwing to Jalen Rager? He Are seems to have been so that? far. I mean, I'll say this. The pass that he had uh, against the Jets, in previous years, he would have taken the safe throw to J.J., who was wide open in the middle. But yeah. Yeah. He, he did recognize that uh, Raylor had split the safeties. And frankly, if the offensive line had just held up for one more second, yeah. he would have been able to step into that, and that might have been a, a 65-yard yeah. touchdown. And I think that's part of O'Connell pushing him, too. I think it really is, which is commendable. You know, I feel like they're fraternal twins, too. I've said that a few times, like Kevin O'Connell and Kirk. 
<laughs> what do you call him? Kevin O'Connell? Is that what you said? Kevin O'Connell. Yes, yeah, he's going to do a lot of coddling around there. Kirk, are you oh, comfortable? There you, go. you feel good? Comfortable? Anyway. <laughs> Realistically, we talked about this a little bit earlier. Where do you see the last four games? We've got the Colts this weekend, then the Giants, yeah. and then go on the road with the uh, – NFC North's winner two yep. step with uh, Green Bay and Chicago. Green where do, you, Bay where do you see the Vikings going? How many more wins do you think they get? Do you think that they run the table? Do you think that they slip up once or twice them more? All. I can see them losing them every single one of those games. To be honest with you, I mean, I thought with- I was negative. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. To be fair, I I had the team going nine and eight. So them being ten and three right now is very surprising, posit- mm-hmm. in a positive way, um, and. I feel I have a good feeling about the game this weekend um, that they can get the win. I feel like they really want to get the taste out of their mouth. I, I I feel like as a collective, they are a prideful group, which you got to respect that. And I feel like they they want to snap out of that quickly, hopefully, and get the win. But the Colts are kind of weird too. They can be they can be sneaky good. Um, I know Maddie Ryan has been kind of on the decline, but he is still Maddie Ice. Got to look out for him. And then playing in Lambo, you never know about that. That could be an absolute S show. That could be a disaster over there. Even though they're a disaster, it's still difficult playing there. And then New York's weird. <laughs> that could yeah, go I think they're I, I think they're a little I think I think they might be a little the popular quote right now is fraud fraud. I think they could be a little fraudish. And then Chicago is weird too. They always play terrible. In Soldier Field, I could see him splitting. Maybe is more of like a realistic kind of thing, possibly splitting the last four here. Well, that's what Super Will's got. He's got 12, so that would be 12 wins. Okay. Which would still be a lot better than I had them going. But, and I haven't looked at the charts yet, (laughs) the astrological charts for the games. I looked at the one this last Sunday. I was like, uh oh, doesn't look good. But yeah, so I don't know. It's, it's hard to, it's hard to know. You know, I think we'll we'll get a taste of how they're feeling now on Saturday and then the next one. But, yeah, I mean, maybe 50-50 split. What do you think? What do you got them going at the last four? I said the last two weeks, both going into the Jets game and the Lions game. At the time, the Jets were the Vikings' most difficult opponent. And after they beat the Jets, I said the Lions are their most difficult opponent. And they went one yeah. one in those two games. They shouldn't have any yeah. problems with the Colts this weekend. Matt Ryan it's is good. a statue. So even our right. pass rush should at least be able to at least get to him <laughs> once or twice. Um, right. I, do, I do agree. With fraudulent paper tigers, whichever phrase you want to use. Uh, the Giants yeah. are a cute little club. And they're, they're a team on the rise. And I like their coach. I mean, their coach has really coached them up to achieve higher than what their current talent level is i mean their quarterback mm-hmm. is 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 far more mediocre than than what he's been made to look yeah and you never know going into green bay but i'm going to put up julian's comment here love how packer fans are acting like their six percent chance is a guarantee for them to make the i know they I mean, you got yeah right they're yep they they won't stop which is it's cute it's cute let them have that Bandino thinks we're going to go one and three in the final stretch. Let's okay, see. one and three. I could see. Yeah, I could see that as well. This summer says we're going to lose them all. Well, I don't know about all. Lose of them. all but one the rest of the way. All but one. Good call. Yeah, I can see that too. Yeah, that may be. I mean, one or yeah. Ah. No, Super I, Will's I think, afraid to play think, the Lions. What do you think in the playoffs? If we had to play yeah, I would agree with Super Will on that one, especially after we, what we just saw. And it's just like. It's like two again, like on paper, the Vikings they look good, right? But like when push comes to shove, it's it's like they don't show up or something. They're missing that extra spark, that extra like aggressiveness. And I don't know if they're missing somebody on the roster to do that. It kind of seems like that spark has been missing kind of a little, a little bit since like Everson Griffin left, really. Mm-hmm. I feel like he was kind of the last vocal mouthpiece. I don't know if that's an issue too, but yeah, I don't want to face the Lions after what <laughs> what I just saw. <laughs> Definitely not. They're a feisty group. They're good, and they're on an upward momentum right now. It's hard to break that. To Paul's but, point about just needing one, yeah, we only need one yeah. to get into the playoffs. We need more than one if we're going to hang on to that two seed, which will give us they a better chance. They should have just gotten it done, to- though. That's the yeah. thing. Why didn't they just get it done? And a lot of people, well, they can go do it at home, at home, at home. It's like at the, you got to stop. You got to get off that at a certain point. Right, because you're not always going to be playing at home. I don't know. Yeah, raise your expectations a little bit. We're not trying yeah, to just yeah, exactly. Get into the playoffs. That's my problem. Something. Right, and I think a lot of people are fine with mediocre. I'm not fine with that. I'm over it. 
What's Ryan got? Ryan's saying the exact same. We need to stay ahead of San Francisco. Um, Slip up. Yeah, last week took that. There. Uh, yeah, that's true, Ryan. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right, let's see what Vibes has got. Home atmosphere, Minnesota Stadium, can have a win, two playoffs games, but the second the Vikings have to play off the loop, they will lose in the playoffs. I totally agree. Yeah, I do not see this sure. team going on the road to beat any, but they're not going on the road to beat Philly. They would no, beat Dallas on the road. Not. Now, granted, they probably won't have to face Dallas on the road, but I feel like uh, they'd probably had a better, better no shot chance. in ba- Dallas, to be honest. Of you like, think so? It maybe of all, if you had to pick between like Dallas or Philly, for example, I think I'd rather play in Dallas, but. You know, I wouldn't want to play either, but isn't that sad? We were just ten and two, and now we're thinking, oh, we don't want to play this team. We don't want to play that team, and everything. <laughs> well, else. I mean, I haven't believed the record all along. I really haven't, and I've always been skeptical that way, though. I really always have, but I need to. I need to buy it the whole way. I've said that the whole time. I need to see it all the way through, and they fall short time and again. They could have an uptick here, sure. We got to see it till the end. Purple purgatory, dude. We're stuck here. To Will's point, we talked yeah. about it earlier, but let's circle back. Daniel Hunter. Yeah. Underachieving. I mean, again, I don't think he fits this system. They are trying to shoehorn him in because O'Connell said he wanted to have a guy that plays the 3-4. They didn't want to trade Daniel Hunter coming off of his injury because right. they, knew they wouldn't have gotten value for him. So they decided, right. no, we're going to keep him and hope that the chips fall to where he's playing opposite of a guy like Zadarius Smith. The problem is, is that Zadarius Smith, when he's full tank, He's a one man wrecking crew. The problem yeah. is, and we, we laughed about how, you how know, much longer is he going to be around? Even, even we laughed at Green Bay Packers fans saying, Hey, look at that. He's costing your salary cap more than he's costing ours, and he's on our team. That's all well and good. But the one, the reason they let him go is because they know he's really good the first half of the season, but the second his injuries start mounting up because he's got that yeah. bum knee, you know, he just becomes just yeah. another guy in there. There has uh, definitely been a decline. And I mean, how would you feel if they entertained trading Daniel Hunter? I would do it in the offseason. Unless you're going to bring in another defensive coordinator that's going to utilize him the way he needs to be utilized. If you can get a if you can get a halfway decent draft pick for him, I'm okay with moving off from him at this point. Benadino, yeah. wh- where were you going with the 2008 Giants? Help me put that in the chat as to where you were going with this. Um, oh, was that an Eli Manning Giants team? Definitely. 2008. Uh, 2008, they were a good team, but they lost. Maybe he meant 2007. I'm not sure. That hmm. that was the first team that, um, that Eli led there. Nobody, um, yeah, exactly, JB. Well, exactly. Yes. Another thing, right <laughs> nobody there. Nobody is scared of Kirk back Cousins. Back to Pizza Ranch boy here. Yeah, for real. The only people scared of Kirk Cousins are skeptical Vikings fans who are never going to be convinced that he can get get it done the way he needs to. But um, where I was going to go with the uh, the uh, the rest of the season is this. My expectation into the season is that they would win between seven and 10 games because that's what they always do. Um, right, I had this right. stat. I, I don't have to remember it off the top of my head. This is year number 18 that the Wilfs have owned the Vikings in the first 17 seasons. They've been pretty, pretty good. Very rarely bad. Very rarely great. They've had, yep. th- they've had three seasons where they've won 11 or more games. They've had four seasons where they've won six or fewer games and 10 seasons where they have won between seven and 10. Some yeah. call that consistency. You and I might call it Consistently mediocrity. Mediocre. Yes, mm-hmm. exactly. So I said, all Money right. In well, their pocket. That's why you got to start looking at ownership. Oh, well, there's that. So yeah. what I had said was, okay, they're bringing in a new coach. They're not blowing up the roster. They're just going to come in and run it back like rebuild. they always have. So I'm going to go with seven to 10 wins. Like, uh, like yeah, they always do. Like because... always. Exactly. No, and they're probably going to land around, around that. They have probably 11, 12. Yeah. That's not far off. If so that's ultimately, how it my expectation going into the season was they need to get to the divisional round of the playoffs. If they get to the wild card round and lose, that's a failed season for me. If they miss the playoffs yeah. altogether, that's a failed season for me. The yeah. benchmark for me was getting to the division round of the playoffs. Well, guess what? When you start off, and yes, some of it might be fool's gold. Some of it was, you know, puck luck, as they say. I know this is not a loud podcast tonight, but puck luck, (laughs) as they say. Your expectations have to be raised a little bit. If you're going to say that you would be satisfied if the Vikings lost in the divisional round of the playoffs, then I say your standards are too low. Uh, Do I have uh, too much? Am I putting too many expectations on them, or am am I rightfully asking for something here, Jade? What do you think? I think you're rightfully asking for something. I don't think – yeah, I don't think you're asking for enough. You know, I think for Kevin O'Connell, as a head coach, first rookie year, it's successful. For the Vikings organization as a whole, because at the end of the day, they're a business. you got to look at ownership, like you're saying, 18 seasons now for the Wilfs. 
that's not good enough. You know, that's not good enough. Again, consistently mediocre. It's like ring around the rosy, the carousel just going around again, mm -hmm. you know, because it's like they're too scared or whatever to really just strip the team down to have a couple, you know, a season or two of bare bones while you put the actual pieces in place. Get a new quarterback in here, younger <laughs> one, build around it. They just don't want to do that because, no, they don't. of course, they always want to be in the mix. They always want to be talked about. They want to be uh, in the hunt by late December to make sure that they get all their gates filled. I will say yeah. this. After the 2019 season where they beat the uh, Saints and then they lost to the 49ers, that's when I would have said, okay, you signed Kirk Cousins to a three-year deal. You gave him a lot of money, and you sold yeah. us on the notion that we're giving him a lot of money. We think he's the final piece, but we only signed yep. him for three years. So if it doesn't work – we're right. not committed to him for seven years. The right. problem is, is then you just kept re-signing him. Did it again. You did it again. Well, you might as well have signed him to a five-year deal off the bat. But getting back to Berardino's he's point. Got, he's got the best agent in the league. I'm convinced yes. of it. And let's be clear. I don't think either one of us begrudges him for, hey. You know, oh, no. He's got money, money in his can. pocket. Yeah, he's just laughing all the way to the bank. To Berardino's point here, we're talking about 08 Super Bowl. Oh, okay. the Giants? Okay. Yes. I'm going to say yeah, this. Yeah. I don't know that that's a fair comp. I have heard on different uh, podcasts and radio stations where can Kirk Cousins do what Eli Manning and Joe Flacco did? Here's the problem with that comparison. While those quarterbacks did get hot at the right time, and while those quarterbacks are comparable to Kirk Cousins, yeah, this year's Vikings defense is nowhere near what the 07 Giants were, and it's nowhere near what the Baltimore Ravens were in 2012. Okay? Right. It, the New York Giants, who ultimately went 11-5 and five and did beat the undefeated Patriots, they had three outstanding pass rushers in Michael Strahan, Justin Tuck, and O.C. Umanura. We don't yeah. quite have that. So I, I get your point, right. Benito, but no, this defense is nowhere near where that Giants defense was, um, yeah. unless I'm missing something. Uh, no, I, I wouldn't say that that's an apt comparison. Again, could Kirk Cousins get on a hot streak? Maybe in quarterback days? comparison, sure. sure. Maybe, yes. you know, quarterback comparison, sure. Yes, that's comparable. Welcome, Jordan. Jordan. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Thanks for having in, Jordan. Appreciate you. Yeah. <laughs> do, 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 Jamie. Do you, do you think the Vikings should blow it up, trade everybody? Well, yes, I would. Yeah, why not? Do it. I would they have last, have year. That last year. I would have last year. Do it. Now, Am I pleasantly surprised that they've had the season that they've had, even though yeah. we see their obvious flaws and we're just waiting for Lucy to pull the ball away from Charlie Brown, <laughs> pretending like she's not going to? Yes. The duct um, tapes, dude. They've been duct taping. Though. Yes. I, 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 would say, I, I would say I'm pleasantly surprised, but yes, because best case scenario, the Vikings got a window this year and next year. After next year, they're going to be blowing it up anyway. I said in 2019 – Blow it Do up it and now. let's start this. Let's not yeah. try to keep this window that's sort of almost shut. What let's not window, to... right? Yeah. Like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like you were saying at the end of year number three with mm -hmm. Kirk. That, that that was the window shutting. Okay. There. The most recent window shutting. It's been shut since then. I what agree with Ryan? Uh, you, Ryan, that uh, it's closer to the uh, the Ravens, but I will still say the oh. Ravens defense was still the defense. Yeah, the Ravens so. defense. Just a, just yeah. a touch. Yeah. You can't. Uh, what's up, Soda? Good to see you. Oh, Soda, what up? Yeah, you can't cut him. Cut Kirk, <laughs> exactly. Please. <laughs> Next day's end. Please. <laughs> Welcome, oh, Dave. Dave. You, hey, Dave. Dave, I will. Uh, I'll WhatsApp you the invite. So if you're at home. Oh, I was and, like, yeah, is Dave joining us. It, 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 Dave, if you want to join your own show, uh, I just. Dave, <laughs> I'll, right. I'll Dave, you want to come on your own show? Me. You know, we, we'll definitely <laughs> take you there. What did you miss? Oh, I don't know. Um, the disgusting uh, game review of what the Lions was. Oh, look on. You, you missed know. some Kirk hate. So there you go, Dave. Don't worry. We don't have to go all out about that again. <laughs> and it wasn't even really Kirk hate. It was no, it really wasn't. Yeah, it was, <laughs> I played his highlights. I mean, come on. We can't call it. Yeah, you hate. did. We were being nice. See, we can be nice. I can be, I can give praise when it's, when it's due. You think JV's onto something that we could get a first round pick for, for Kirk Cousins? <gasps> Ooh, perhaps, especially if, you know, here's the thing, too. Ah, man, especially if we could get some, like, I don't know, garbage time, Kirk stats, really fatten up those stats. I don't know. Yeah, I think potentially. Super Will wants right the, team. the younger Deion Sanders in three years. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, you're Deion funny. Deion Sanders guys. in three years? Yeah, Ooh. Right. No, we're not cutting him. It was uh, Cutting who? 
Cousins, the the, the commenter from. Oh Ryan yeah. All right, no, Ryan posts no, a good question. What do you sense. consider blowing up? Certain players are harder to move, Kirk, but I do agree. With, I wouldn't be opposed to it as much. Okay, blowing it up would be uh, trading Harrison, or one way or the another, moving off the roster. Dalvin Cook, by trade, bye. Got uh, Dalvin go. Cook, Harrison Smith, Eric Harrison Kendricks. Smith. I know it's yeah, that would... but Adam, Adam Thielen. Yep, Adam Thielen, Eric Kendricks, Daniel Hunter, Kirk. Yeah, Hunter's in there. Kirk's mm-hmm. in there. Yeah. So, yes, I guess you could Patrick say – Patrick Peterson. Well, yeah, definitely him too. I would say you'd be left with the tackles, uh, Ryan O'Neal and Christian Derrissaw. You'd be yeah. left with Ezra Cleveland. Obviously, you'd be left with J.J. and Rager. Yeah, Ryan Wright can stay, obviously. Rager. Justin Kenny. Jefferson, KJ Osborne, in my opinion, Alexander Madison can stay. Wong Wu could stay. Sullivan. Wong Wu for sure. Would you really keep Alexander Madison? Because if you got I rid like of Cook, him. you're still going to have to give Alexander Madison almost as much. Not quite I mean, as Alexander much. Ma- well, maybe though. I feel like you maybe could get him for a little bit cheaper, and he's just as good. Because, I mean, I feel like you could get him like for cheaper and have him stay and have him be your starting running back, and he could be solid still. But yeah, I mean, I just I'm a fan of his. But I mean, yeah, if you really had to let him go, because again, there is depth there at running back, you know. So yeah, you can see it. Let's circle back to Cook. We talked about him a little earlier. Let's put aside yeah. his salary cap number. Do you think? Yeah. Do you, I, I I'm not going to say that he's the same guy that he has been because clearly he's not. But I still no. think he's serviceable. Do you? Right. Do you think that Dalvin Cook is just over the hill, or do you think that he's just running behind an offensive line that can't block for him right now, and then ultimately that that kills his value, being that he's paid as much as he is? I think it's he's past his prime. He's already peaked, and then when you're you know behind an offensive line like we have, you know it, it's also not good. And he's never played a season completely healthy. That's just the way that it rolls, and running backs especially. Their lifespan in the NFL is so small. It's a lot smaller than other positions. And again, fumbling the ball, dude, get out of here. So I think it's more actually his age and the fact that he has always had flaws, but I think his speed has really been able to kind of do a little smoke and mirror show on the flaws maybe, especially Mm -hmm. on he drops passes and does fumble the ball frequently. And like I said, is – injured but he's been able to put up amazing stats and have these amazing bursts that you know it can kind of cover up for some things but i think it's i think he's only got probably a year or two left to be honest all right i'll pose it to you this way if you could keep one oh, yeah the paul other, i agree with that yeah yeah mm-hmm. if you could only keep one between cook and madison but you could get dalvin cook on a reduced salary to equal to what it would cost you to keep alexander madison what would you say who would you keep in that scenario i realize it's unlikely but just for kicks and giggles here i think i I would keep alexander madison for sure because too when dalvin cook has been out and alexander madison has had to step in i think we've won pretty much every game so (laughs) they're pretty comparable in my book um especially if you can get them for the same price. And I think technically you could get more trade value for Dalvin Cook, but I think they're just as good. You know, maybe Dalvin is, you know, a hair better. He's faster, Mm -hmm. does break for bursts more, but I think they're so comparable. So why not if you can get a little bit more for Dalvin Cook? And again, he just can't stay healthy. I'd say do it. And then if you could keep Alexander Madison around, keep him. But again, we've got we have we've got some depth there. Well, I'll say this: I want to thank everybody who's joining us in the chat right now. Yes, thank people, you. And that is a, a record. Not it's a record for under the lights when it's not either Greg Coleman or Chuck Foreman. So other than oh Foreman, my gosh, Rogers, what's the home. what do we got right now? How many? We people got twenty five right now, but we only oh, got eighteen nice. likes in here. So guys, if you haven't Amazing. already hit the like Thanks button, everybody for joining. Um, whichever channel you're uh, tuned into, hit that like button, hit that share button. And if you don't already subscribe to both uh, Purple and Gopher Days, Sports and Stars with Jane, as well as Minnesota Sports Talk, please, please, please do. Uh, I haven't heard back from Dave, so I'm guessing he was probably just got. Oh, yeah. Maybe he, he was, was just chiming right. in. Yeah. Probably. If you still listen, thanks for letting me co-host, Dave. Absolutely. <laughs> Can you get a second rounder for Cook? Probably not. I think you could probably get a fourth for him. Because he's, he's yeah, older. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. You potentially could. You never know, especially if he's got – you know, if he's, if he, oh, he's still here. Dave, he's what here. up? Um, especially if he ends the season well and he stays healthy, you know, the rest of the season potentially. 
because these could all be building blocks. But it's like, too, this is all hypothetical because they're not going to strip the team down after this year. They're just not going to do it. No, but, they won't because that's just yeah. who that's just who the Vikings are. That's who the organization is. All right. At this point. Viking Jerome. Viking Jerome, what's going on? Good to see you. <laughs> to uh, see sorry, you. No. Dave, I sent it to you in WhatsApp because I don't have – I just sent it to you in WhatsApp, so the link is there for you. Viking Jerome, thanks for joining us. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the share button. You know the drill, but thanks for joining us. Uh, if you want to pose a question for Jane besides Hi Hippie Girl, you certainly can, and anybody else there as well. We're taking questions yeah. all night long here. Moving forward, what do you see this week uh, for the Colts game? Uh, in particular, and then we can talk about the other three games a little bit more after that. But what do you see the key to uh, the Colts, besides scoring more points in them, uh, would be what do we got to look out for, so to speak? Well, I mean, I'm not, like, super familiar with what the Colts got going on right now other than Matt Ryan. I know that they can be good, though, that they can be good. That And I'm surprised it's probably because Matt Ryan is really, really on the decline here. But mm -hmm. just come prepared to play, honestly. And again, I think they're really going to want to perform well at home. They want to get that taste out of their mouth. So honestly, just show up and do your job. The defense needs, everybody just needs to be ready. There was, it's like they were there, but they mm -hmm. weren't there. It's like, it was some sort of like days like, hello, people, you're playing a game here. Let's pay attention. So I don't know, just have the enthusiasm re ready. I think just be on, be on your A game. You can't treat the season as if it's pseudo okay we get a little break now like we don't really have to go into these games unless they care about it go win the game and clinch the division at home get it done get the job done honestly it's pretty simple at this point i'm gonna say this the last four games that the vikings have at this point you are going to not be facing other than if aaron Rodgers is motivated you're not going to be facing outstanding quarterbacks but then again you haven't been this is the time right. to say you know what we need to we're not we don't need to completely empty the playbook defensively but we need to start running some of the looks and some of the pressure packages that we are going to want to do uh come playoff time and if at this right. point you do not feel comfortable um running blitz packages then what the heck what, what the heck are you doing out there you cannot just sit back and let mediocre quarterback after mediocre quarterback uh pick you apart at some right. point, Ed Donatel, you're on, you're not just on the hot seat. You're on the hottest of all. <laughs> he Everybody really is. Everybody's is on his arse right now. Yeah. So to me, I think a little unfairly, to be honest, but a little bit. Well, it gets back to what I said a moment ago. If if Kevin O'Connell wants, if we're going to give Kevin O'Connell all this credit for yeah. changing the culture from getting rid of the big bad wolf or ding dong, the witch is dead. That was right. Mike Zimmer. at some point you have to understand you are the head coach. Your defensive coordinator is putting you in a position where you just wasted the best performance of the season by both Kirk cousins and Justin Jefferson, right. because your defensive coordinator isn't doing anything. So no. where I'm right. going with all of this is it's time to, it's, it's time to throw the kitchen sink at people. Now, Matt, right. Ryan, as I said, he's a statue. He should be an easy target for you to get some target practice this weekend and to be able to carry some of that against a Daniel Jones and Aaron Rodgers uh, and a Justin Fields and then whoever you play in the first round of the playoffs. Cornerback shouldn't have any problems, hopefully. You know? <laughs> I, I like that one, uh, Vikings Jerome, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Ed, I love that show. <laughs> yes, it is time and to say Donatello that. And Donatello home. <laughs> ET phone home. Yes, something like that. There you go. Starts up front. Dave, I sent you a text, an actual text. Um, yeah, I was like, too, should I send Dave the link? I don't know. I was like, no, I, to sent, do it. I sent it to him one way. I just okay. sent it to him two ways here. Um, all right. <laughs> having said all that, what do we got here? Oh, we still got over 20 in here. So at right. this point, um, we're going to try to get Dave on. But for right now, everybody put your uh, score predictions in uh, for this coming Ooh, Saturday. Yeah. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> this is a good one. Man, got Ryan blocks on his feet. <laughs> well, that's funny. Gonna be gonna tell gonna tell. That's a funny one. Ah, Who said that? There he is. Soda. Who said that? Ah, uh, that was Julian. That was Julian. Oh, Julian. That's funny. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a special guest on his own show. Dave. Oh. Hey, what's hey. up? How are you? Hi, Dave. You're home safe, are you? I, we got trade talks going and all sorts of stuff. It's awesome. 
Yeah, we're trading oh, Cousins, yeah. Cook, Cleveland. <laughs> yeah, we're getting rid of uh, everybody. Harrison Smith, Daniel Everybody's Hunter. Gone. <laughs> yeah, well, cleaning the house. Well, you know, honestly, yeah. uh, we're at a point where we probably could have that happen with, you know, hopefully with some depth and some free agents in the offseason. We'd have room to, you know, add some people and also to uh, release some, some people. I, you know, and some people might take some pay cuts, which is greatly needed. So we'll see. Yeah. Yep. Uh, super well has, uh, has given you the there. So there <laughs> Home you improvement. There you go. <laughs> How was your trip? Oh, there pretty good, man. My kid good. loves uh, Disney, so. Oh, were you awesome. at Disney, Dave? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, past two days. Oh, there you well, go. yesterday and today. Yeah, you were just absorbed about in Disneyland. Yeah. Disney World. Disneyland. Yep. Got yeah. to forget about the Vikings for a while. Right, yeah. Well, they yep. gave you a, a very good game to forget about this past week. That's that's for Yeah, to. for real. Well, I got, uh, I mean, I got an interesting, uh, well, I, you know, it's like a uh, cooler minds have prevailed, you know, feeling about me. I look back and I, if I, th- I think about it, I'm like, we don't fumble and we don't give up uh, a 48 yard run on a punt. Ah, yeah. And w- which we would never have, we would never have onside kicked. Right. You know, and that's, you know, at the end of the game, <laughs> yeah, we win that game. That's right. I mean, so it's not as holy shit fire sale. Let's get rid of this team right now. I, yeah. I Donna tells God I get pressure on the quarterback, and we'll be. Yeah, what was and we could be that? okay. I think if Donna yeah. tells you get pressure on the damn court, you said God, uh, you know you said thing. the you said the next quarterback's a statue. Well, Jared Goff's a statue. That, well, that guy is, that. is a statue. Is there is that. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like Jared Goff and Matt Ryan are probably pretty equal in mobility. Yeah, right. Yeah, so I'm right. like, uh, you know, there was a time when you know Jared Goff tried to, you know, roll out like twice, and you know he yeah. couldn't get anywhere. Right. So, but that's the thing, though. If they do get time, like if Matt Ryan does get time, he can be dangerous. Can <laughs> if that's you give him a three thing. yard, if you give him a three yard bubble like we did Goff, I mean, he could yeah, apart, right? it could so, be a repeat. You know, all Don until got to do is get pressure, and his defense works. I mean, hopefully he hears the alerts, you know, because I have, you know, it's like, hello. And it seems like such a simple thing you would think is a defensive coordinator. It's like he's on deni- He's up on the state or on the podium in denial of his defense. Perhaps. Like, oh, everything's just fine. You know, we're not giving up touchdowns in the red zone. And like, yeah, yeah well, against the guy who's played four games. <laughs> yeah. Against the guy who's played four games, you didn't give up touchdowns. But, yeah, we're going to play yeah. some guys with some experience. Yeah. What's up, Summer Home? Yay. What's up, Summer, again? Thanks for joining us. Go. Thanks, everybody, for joining Dave, we yeah, hit 25, thanks, and I think that's the highest non, uh, non-Greg non Coleman and non- uh, <laughs> Well, it's because I wasn't on. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. Oh, no. Uh, I plead the fifth. No, I'm kidding. No. no. Absolutely not. Yeah, no, that's amazing. You guys you have been a great guest over here. Tell me we might have uh, Kraus on. No, I didn't get to that. Um you know, Jade and I were just having so much fun going back about how awful that Detroit Lion game. But yes, <laughs> next reminiscing. We were reminiscing yes. about us. Next yeah. Tuesday, under the lights, we have the all-time leader in interceptions, Paul Krause. Vikings wow. Ring of Honor. He will be our special guest. Amazing. Nobody's so ever going to touch. So he that tells way. me. So he tells me. So there he tells you go. me. Yes. You got the word. Yeah, he said yeah. to call him. I'm not What's sure up, if he. Sodak? Yeah, I'm trying to. Uh, I'm kind of hoping he realizes I'm bringing him on YouTube live, but uh, I tried to explain that to him. So hopefully he sees the message and uh, responds back, says he can be by a computer. Otherwise, we'll try to I'll try to do it via phone. All right. So oh, yeah, we, he said he would, and he's looking forward to it. So Absolutely. nice, that's amazing. Good deal. Yeah. The good guests just keep on a rolling. Yeah, and a couple of guys come up to me. And I'm trying to get Chuck Foreman back on. I, I'm gonna try to oh, call word. him. He, he didn't answer a text. So I'm gonna try to call him this time. Oh, there you go. <laughs> now, if you can pull off what Super Will is suggesting here, oh, what, that, what, that yeah. might just be where we retire the show. Dude, I was supposed to go nice out with my friend. I was supposed to go out with my buddy in like 2020, and I, you know, I, I ended up not going out. And sure enough, he's walking on the sidewalk. Is and, that um, right? And, oh. and meets meets Chris Carter on the sidewalk. Wow. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, down here in South course. Florida. I'm like, That's no shit. Crazy. Of course, what was there it would have been a different timing, and we would never have saw him coming out of his Wouldn't car. It would be the perfect know? time at some point. Yeah. <laughs> no. Wow. Yeah. No, that's cool. Well, Dave, I'll throw about, it to you. I'm sorry. Well, you know. Oh, no, I'm all good. 
Yeah. I'll throw it to you. Where do you see uh, – what do you see the Vikings doing the next four games the rest of the season? Where do you see them finishing out? Are we able to hold off San Francisco for the two seed? Uh, what are your thoughts? I mean, Jesus, is the Br- Brock Purdy train taking off, huh? <laughs> Holy we crap! Like, that that was emo- I was emotional yeah. looking at his dad crying in the oh, stands. Oh yeah, that's right. Holy cow! Yes, that family. was some ESPN gold. Mm-hmm. Oh man! Uh, Disney, so, they could make a Disney movie. Yeah. McCaffrey has set that team on fire. I think um, Purdy yeah. is apparently, you know, the real deal. I, you know, who knows? We, we may have to win out, and I don't know. Do we have a? Would we have a tiebreaker on that? No, I we don't would know. not. We have to right. see. You see, Dave. Now <laughs> we don't need to get into the discussion about syntax and actual definitions. Oh yeah, but this mm-hmm. is what. These Some are must-win games. Yeah. Hold on just a quick second. Yeah. What's up, Ricky? <laughs> good to see you, man. Thanks Ricky. for joining me. I'm a t- it's good to hear from you, man. I'll text you when we get done. This is what we meant by, okay, not quote-unquote must-win, but now our margin yeah, I- for error is gone. We have – they own the tiebreaker exactly. because they have a better conference record than we do, which means if we've um, – we only have a half-game lead over them ostensibly. So – to your point that you had been making the last week or so about possibly resting players against Chicago, that margin was gone, was eliminated by losing that game in Detroit. So that was what I was trying to communicate. Oh, it, hasn't. it hasn't been eliminated. Yeah, it has. Who's San Francisco going to lose to? Seattle? Washington? Maybe. Vegas? Uh, Dallas almost <laughs> lost to the Texans. To Seattle. Man. Dallas Seattle almost lost to the Texans. This is the NFL. I mean, things can happen. It's not guaranteed yeah. that uh, San Francisco wins out. Could they? Yeah. Could we? Yeah. I'm just saying it's not it's not done. The book is I'm not, not saying written. it's done, but I'd love to have I, that I, we we need in this case if we stay one game ahead, yeah, for we got to win out. Yeah. So you think they yeah. will? They need we to control our own destiny, so we got to win out. They when was the last time the Vikings controlling yeah. their own destiny was actually a good idea? Exactly. That's what makes me nervous. Mm-hmm. And so did, you, did you say they play Seattle? They play Seattle, and I believe they play Seattle on Thursday. And then they play uh, Washington. This Thursday? Another one. So they they play a tougher schedule than us. Uh, And then they have the Raiders, and then they have the Cardinals. So Raiders and Cardinals, uh, we can pretty much say that, barring something Oh, yeah, Kyler Murray, that's a bummer about that. That is unfortunate, by the way. I mean, Raiders, the guy's playing, you know, the coach is playing for his job, right? Isn't he? You know, and so are some players. What's the Raiders record right now? Like six and seven or something. I'll, I'll look. It I don't up. know if it's I mean, I know it's not above five hundred, but I'll say it this: depends I on where it's the... at too. Any team going out, you know, right, right. I guess San Francisco, where they're wherever they're playing. I don't, I don't know the, I don't have their schedule up, but you know, just what you're saying, it sounds like they have a tougher schedule than us. Uh, I, I don't we, know. Don't Here's we have San really Francisco. They've got comparison. They've got at Seattle this Thursday. That's probably their toughest. Oh game. yeah. Short mm-hmm. week. Okay. Did Short Seattle week. have a bye week? Uh, did Seattle have a bye? Uh, I'll take a look. Anyway, no, they, after- played, they played on Sunday or Monday, I think. Didn't they? No, Monday, Seattle played this week. Oh, it wasn't Monday. It's, um, no, it was Sunday. Cardinals. I think it was Sunday at noon, right? Production Before value. Eight. Yes, production value. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I should okay. already had it up. I know. But, yeah, my only concern this week is now we're playing a team on a bye week, you know, and and they've mm-hmm. actually played people tough lately. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I I still think the situation is, you know, our offense looked great, you know, except for our run game, obviously. But we still put right. up over the second time I think this year we put up over 400 yards. So uh, in the fact that well, Seattle, we, we probably iron out Sorry. these coaching uh, decisions that uh, KOC was doing. Hopefully he's uh, got past that and he and he lit a fire. Donald tells asked it because he's brought it up in the press conference. We need to be more aggressive. So yeah. hopefully, hopefully we change it around. And I think we're hell. We're better than the Colts. We're better than the Colts, no doubt. Yes, definitely them. better. Than yeah, the definitely. I would agree with that. Colts at home. Are they going to show question, up and be uh, better? Seattle just lost to the Panthers. The, the Seattle just played the Panthers and lost. Okay. Oh yeah, that's right. It was Carolina. So. All I right. don't see them beating San Francisco. I mean, again, that's Thursday well, you night. Know, we will all give, give me two games. Sure. Give me two right. starts of Purdy. Give me two starts of Purdy. I'll tell you if he's a real deal or not. But yeah, McCaffrey is um, probably lighting a fire on that team, and 
the defense is good, and I guess they're yeah. healthy now. Yeah. So. Yeah. But anyway, to finish out so, that thought, they got Seattle, then they got Washington, then they go to the Raiders, and they're at home against the Cardinals. Okay, so maybe they lose one game. I don't see them losing two. But so what we get the three? If let's say we, you know, they do pass us, we get the three seed. We're either playing what Seattle, Washington, um, the Colts, or or uh, well, uh, the, Colts. the Lions. Not the Colts. Uh, Giants? Sorry, Giants, okay. Washington, yeah. Seattle or the Lions. Well, that's going to be the case either way, regardless of whether they finish the two or the three. It's going to be one of those four teams. But my point is, is I'd much rather (laughs) would be staying at home and having San Francisco come to us versus the other way around. I don't like our chances at all going to San Francisco. And it's sad that we can't be confident going anywhere else, you know? Like, okay, time but, to block some people in the chat. Good I know night. I was trying to do that. I couldn't do it. <laughs> yeah, only the uh, only the host can do that. And uh, I didn't give you guys. That I was trying time. to do it on my phone. Somebody else. Uh, yeah. Anyway, not saw it yet. Last year coaches, this year's players. I'm not Dave. Oh. What did you mean by that? I'm not sure what you meant by that. Maybe the know. like ones to blame. Oh, I suppose I, I can hear that. Uh, yeah. I, you know, a lot of the things I, I mean, I could, I could forgive KOC being a rookie head coach. Yeah. You know, the last game. I cannot forgive Donatel and not getting a pass rush when his defense is predicated on that. I mean, the three, four, you know, Fangio defense is predicated on four guys getting to the quarterback and they were just not happening. So. Is that? Yeah. Do you think that it's a matter of we just don't have four guys to be able to bring that, or do you think it's lack of recognition? I think it's need? lack of the you know creativity as far as um, disguising pressures. When we have done that in the fourth quarter, usually mm-hmm. we've been successful. When he's like, "Oh, now I need to do it." Well, do yeah. it. Do it. You know, you can disguise pressures many different ways. Right. I mean, there, I then. think it was. I think it was the Jets game we brought. We brought um, uh, Harrison Smith off the edge. I mean, it was he had the Jets a lot. and the Patriots. Jets and Patriots. Yeah. And it it uh, got him out of the pocket, man. It got white out of the pocket, and you know he he it cut off half the field, and Bynum made a play. You know, it's like you know do that like all the time. <laughs> Thank you, show. Coffee. Appreciate Sorry, it. correction. <laughs> correction. Yeah, I'm seeing some yeah, new good. names, man. I'm seeing some new names. Kofi, <laughs> what's up? That's Go great. Thanks for joining us. Hit subscribe yeah. to the channels if you don't already. Uh, if you only subscribe to two, get the third. If you only subscribe to one, get the other two. And I appreciate everybody who has joined us in have here you, so Have far. you got yeah. your hours, Jade? Have you got your What's hours that? yet? What's that? Have you, you got, got your, your hours. hours yet? Oh, my gosh. The, they keep going down. They keep going down yeah. like every day, I swear. Now they're like hovering. I'm like yeah. 800 hours away. I think I'm at like Oh, it has years. gone down. Wow. I know. I it's yeah, I finally Googled it and figured out what was going on, but we're going to get there eventually. Well, I'm going to try to do another marathon. then. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. (laughs) Yeah. I always have one playing actually too on my computer, (laughs) just trying to keep it going. I have (laughs) the loop going. So yeah, we'll see. Uh, We'll get there soon enough. (laughs) One of these. You got to go every other day though. If you do it the same day, it'll only count at once. Oh, really? Yeah. Is that how I don't even know. I thought it would have to be a unique view. So I don't, I'm not sure. I usually, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, we'll see. We'll what talk we offline about how to uh, get more YouTube yeah. counts and hours. <laughs> yeah, no, I appreciate all the help. Looking at, but. <laughs> we'll figure that out. But hey, go yeah. subscribe and listen to her channel. Go to a game day. Thank she does you. live. Yeah, I live, live. during the game. That counts. So check it out. That counts mm-hmm. as ours. So go, go, yeah. uh, just put your computer on and on. Just, just, just hit view, uh, watch all. Go now, <laughs> open up another Thank tab, you. go to Sports it. and Stars with Jade, and click Thank you. W- watch all. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate that. I, yeah, I was literally I had you on my in my living room during Thanksgiving the whole day. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I love that. Thank you. Your family's probably like, oh my god, like, who's this? Yeah. Who's this? Yeah. Vikings nonstop. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Why is Kirk Cousins doing that? Yeah, right? Ah, Pizza Ranch Boy. Ah. I had it on mute. Oh, that's funny. There <laughs> so, you go. I want to ask the two of you this. Am I, am I on to something or am I on something? It seems that the, the biggest flaw with this team is on both sides of the ball, they seem to be very much feast or famine. 
offense. Yeah. First drive or two, they usually score, and then they take a ha- take two I think quarters. You get off. conservative. Yeah. Yeah. Defensively, first drive or two of the game, they seem to do pretty well, and then fourth quarter or middle of the third quarter on, they seem to do pretty well. Detroit, notwithstanding. It, Right. Is it is it is it that they're just so good with scripted plays and then they can't make their adjustments until late third, early fourth quarter? Why is it that I, and, and I've kind of noticed a pattern? It's both offensively and defensively against yep. the Patriots. They gave up a lot of yards and points, but they didn't give up any points from the middle of the third quarter on. Same kind of thing with the Jets outside of one score there. What is with this team that they have both offensively and defensively a propensity to start out hot, get cold for a while and then try and turn it on at the end, which, okay, against bad teams to mediocre teams, that'll work, but against playoff teams, probably not. I mean, what do you guys think? Right. Consistency issues. They, they're they not consistent. It's always been a problem. And I, I, at this point, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. It, it, they need to be just pushed the entire game, you know, because Kevin is all about, you know, let's come together. You know, maybe they need to be pushed a little bit more. Maybe I'm not exactly sh- <laughs> Jade in the shade. That's funny. Will. <laughs> I don't know though. I don't know. It seems like they just can't ever click. And it seems like when the offense is doing well, the defense, you know, like you're saying, where are they at mm-hmm. defense? Hey, you're doing great. Okay. Offense three and out. What's going on here. I, I, I don't know what it is. It, it seems like they just can't keep the momentum. And they can't, once they have it, they can't hold it, you know, the whole way through. I don't know what it is. Dave, what do you think? Blame. I, offense gets conservative, man. I, you know, this whole thing, you know, I know NFL players and commentators, and we all say it too, scripted plays, but they don't practice those plays necessarily any more than the other plays. You know, they're all in the playbook, and they go to it. It just so happens that, you know, it's the same situation. Um, it's third and nine. He's not going to call the same play as if it was third and two. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I'm like, right. how is it necessarily scripted? To me, it's like a book where you, it's like you choose your path. If you go this yeah, way, you go to page 36, choose your own adventure. You go to page 36. Yeah. If you go, <laughs> if you're going to take this way, if you go, it's, it, that's what that, you know, that, uh, what, what is it? Uh, Waffle house menu thing that they always carry yeah. on the sideline is like, yeah. okay, these are my For third real. and short plays. These are my, you know, these are my second and, you know, 10 yeah. plays or second and five plays. So it's mm-hmm. like, you know, this one didn't work. Okay, let's go to this one. He may in the first drive have which play, you know, I would run on in this drive down. Yeah. But I, I really don't think. Maybe at the wrong time, too. It's like good, the intention there, but the follow through is, is missing. Well, and we have fourth and one, and I'm like, okay, let's hand yeah. an inside handoff on in the shotgun on fourth and one. Yeah. With a rookie center and a rook not a rookie center, but a backup center a backup. and a backup yeah. left tackle in there. Yeah. And let's get, you know, yeah. let's let's show them what we're doing, standing up, shotgun it to me, and hand it off. And I'm like, that was going nowhere. You no. know, I'm like, you right. know, get me get under center, give him an get make it you know, give them the risk of play action. I'm surprised give they the don't risk of play action. it too with how like, even then, yeah, we, Kirk has been. Except for the one, except for the one time in Buffalo, he's made every first down on a, on yeah. a quarterback sneak. So, mm-hmm. yeah. What did you know. think of the onside uh, kick, Dave? We, we oh, you think yeah. terrible, <laughs> terrible idea, <laughs> terrible yeah. idea. Uh, yeah, we had yeah. we had two minutes and fifty seconds left. Right. Two minutes and 47 15? seconds, two timeouts, and then obviously oh, two minutes. Well, first of all, let me talk about the, the ref screwing us. Justin Jefferson should have had a touchdown. I'm like, he called the play dead, so they also couldn't review it. Also, that challenge, too, was weird that that wasn't counted. Yeah, with the – Oh, the, well, he wasn't touched, and his momentum was taking him back behind the – I don't the know. First it down. looked fishy to me, and then they called you're talking the, about Adam. You're talking about Justin Jefferson on that uh, yeah. like, third and nine? And then, like, what was it, Adam Thielen later on? Then they called it a first down. I don't know. It looked, I don't know, it's fishy. Oh, yeah. Well, he was down inside. He apparently his knee was down before he touched out of bounds. So it was, uh, it was going to be a play. It was going to, the clock should have went. And so because of that, there's a 10 second runoff. And that's why the other team called timeout. Okay. But, so the the original call is that he made it out out of bounds and got the first down. Play okay. dead, 
Well, they reviewed it. And they yeah. said, okay, it's first down, but he was down before he went out of bounds. And yeah, that's why they did the 10, you know, they called the timeout. But yeah, if, if he gets a touchdown, we probably have another 30 seconds, right? Yeah. We kick it deep, right? you know, yeah. the, and now they're maybe conservative and we get the ball close, you know, with a minute and a half, two, two minutes, you know, we had two timeouts left, right? right? Yeah, we had two timeouts left. We might get the ball with three minutes but Our left. defense was not playing well, though. I mean, I didn't necessarily hate it, but just well, again, the devil's advocate. But one I, stop, they're back yeah. in their own end zone. Do they play yeah, conservative? Are they going to throw the ball? You know, who knows? But I feel like May, maybe, maybe they run maybe play action. Of, maybe they yeah. run play action with their left tackle then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I feel like maybe that's doing. part of Kevin's problem too. Like, I like the aggressiveness. It's just not at the right up, not at the right time, not at the right opportunity. Like the aggressive nature of it, but just with not the right time. With two timeouts and three minutes to go, or two and forty-four to go, the right play is kicking it away. Oh, either yeah. way, Mike, Mike, a patriot on uh, the show I do on Monday, both on my channel as well as simulcasting on the Purple Code. This is Mike Castellino, the king of Viking Twitter. Sunday was frustrating. Nice. We made mistakes oh, that we avoided. Canada. <clears throat> Thank yeah. the Vikings rebound big. First off, thanks I for think joining they do me, too. Mike. Thanks for joining us, Mike. We appreciate it. Yeah. Do, you, um, do you see the bounce back this week? Do you see this is going to be another one of those close games? Or is this one of those times where, like Green Bay, we actually put the boot on somebody's throat? <laughs> if there is <laughs> such a thing. Oh, yeah. okay. 14 weeks later, we do yes. what we did against yes. Green Bay. Yeah, like yeah. that SpongeBob <laughs> episode. What was it, like 12 hours later? Yeah. Yeah. 14 days that. later or 14 yeah. weeks yeah. later. Yes. Yeah. I I don't I don't I need to see it to believe it. I just we haven't done it yet all year. No, really? not since I, week one. So had the shot against Chicago to do it, and then they let him back in. Had the shot against Arizona again. Yeah, uh, you know our our special in that Chicago game, our special teams went to crap and started giving yeah. the ball to fifty. Right. So, so that, come on, you know, special teams, come on! They've been playing so well too. Yeah, well, that was that game, and then this game it was the two uh, the punt return and then the uh, the. Uh, the uh, fake punt, right? That cost us. Um, yeah. So, I mean, they're, gosh, if we, it's again, yeah. you got to play a whole game and uh, two of our, two of our three sides of the ball, right? Didn't perform as good. Well, you know, defense never, but the right. special teams <laughs> usually, right? And our offense has been pretty much the same, it seems, yeah. you know? We have right. four, three or four really good there's drives. There's been a couple games where, I mean, well, we don't have to talk about the Dallas game, but there's been a couple of times where they've been no shows, but the offense, yeah. Well, yeah. the Eagles, the Dallas, and yeah. But you know, but I'm, what I'm saying is like three or four, more. yeah, like three or four mm -hmm. drives in the game and go score touchdowns, right? Right, you know? right, yeah, yeah. And that's another thing too that kind of bothers me. It's like we go, we go do this amazing play, we go score, and then the teams are always like, "Oh, okay, that's cute." And then they go do it right back. Right. Like you can't ever like, you know, I don't know. This team does not know how to seize momentum. Whenever they don't, when, yes, the offense doesn't thing. wake up until they're it. down. Not a good thing, but good they, way to put they it. They don't yeah. wake up until they're down and desperate. And once they finally right. come all the way back, then the defense, who's you know probably hasn't given up a score in three drives, oh. We're, the offense came back in tight as I suppose we can let the other team score now because we need to keep the <laughs> offense desperate. Ah, it's, it's yeah. Well, yeah. we're going to wrap in probably about four minutes here. So everybody put their final score in the chat here. I know some of you guys did that earlier, and I'll get those back up here in a minute. But yeah. uh, Dave, I'll start with you, and then uh, we'll finish with Jade here because I know you got to get ready for uh, your show with Rap over on the Purple Code. And, again, want to remind oh, everybody. Oh, yeah, I'll go hop over on the chat over there. Uh, so if you, you don't already subscribe to uh, Sports and Stars with Jade, please do so, as well Thank as Minnesota you. Sports Talk, as well as Purple and Gold for days. Um, and also subscribe to Purple Pocket Podcast, I guess, if you have. Yeah, that. I you guess. Right. He, don't need any help. he don't need any help. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> he should be saying that for the three of us versus the other right, one. But right. we all content creator family, so we all throw shots at everybody. What, um, yeah. what, what do you see going down this week here? Uh, I'll start with you, Dave. Um, what's your final score prediction? How are we going to get this done? Are we going to get this done? Well, I think we're going to get this done. I, I kind of, you know, I had a lot of time to think on the road. So, um, yeah, my, my <laughs> thoughts were that, you know, it wasn't that bad. If it wasn't for the, uh, it, if it wasn't for a few weird coaching decisions that I don't think cost us the game because like, a, a the, uh, the fumble 
was on first down. I mean, that wasn't, you know, fourth down we were trying that play. It was first down. You, right. you don't expect the guy to fumble the ball, right? So, you know, that didn't co- – the fumble cost us, you know, seven points. The play call didn't. So I'm no. just saying – a KOC will think a little bit better about going for two, right? You know, in, a, in that one situation and, yeah. and putting us down by eight instead of seven. So I don't get that. But so I think he'll iron out these coaching decisions he made. But I don't think we fumble on the four yard line again or give up a 48 yard run on a punt. So, <laughs> and we're playing not as good as team at home. I think, uh, I think we'll have all, well, I think we'll be pissed off. I think yeah. Donatel, like I said, is is got the message. I mean, you're being called out on live press conferences that we need to be more aggressive. So, right. and you, you just turn on the turn on the internet, turn man. The dial, You'll see it. how much we he, how much <laughs> how many people want you gone right now. So he's playing for he's coaching for his job, and he better oh, do what his sure. head coach wants, right? Um, mm-hmm. Because you know, Quasi don't give a crap. I don't think. I don't think I he know. gives a crap. I think he he wants he wants results, and he knows it's not happening one side of the ball. So thirty-one twenty. Ooh, Jade, what's the <laughs> thirty-one? Yeah, 20. I mean to be fair too, I have not looked at the astrological chart yet, so this could always change. <laughs> I look at the um, pending the, the position of Jupiter. What, right. Yeah, pending like the position of Jupiter, what's what's your prediction? <laughs> yeah, right. Without that, I like you were saying, saying, Dave, and I was kind of making mention of this slightly earlier. Is I think they're going to want the taste out of their mouth. I think they are a prideful group. They're going to be playing at home. Um, yeah, they just let's get the momentum going again. I think that they can get it done. They have the ability. They have the tools to get it done. It's all <laughs> Sorry, there. <Kofi. laughs> Down a shell. <laughs> I'm a shell. Sorry. Ah, I'm a shell. Just, yep. Oh, hey, Kevin. What's going on? Thanks for joining. Hey, Kevin. Thanks for joining. Yeah. Appreciate thank you. you. Um, but yeah, I think if they can get that done, do it. Kevin O'Connell, Kevin O'Connell, do some coddling. Okay. Get them ready. I'm going to say at this point, Vikings get the victory. Show up 27 17 Vikings. But again, this could subject to change, but that's what I'll go with for right now. Well, we had them earlier, but Julian's got 27 to 10. Super Wolves oh. got 31 oh, to yep. 23. Hey, we got some optimism here. Yeah, we do, Bandito, definitely. 27 to 17. Yeah, mm-hmm. Both of said 34 to 20, but I predict Donna Show makes that <laughs> run. Like That's the thing. That, that is what is dangerous. <laughs> this could be, it could be the flop the other way. Yeah. With, if so that kid, 61 high. nothing. Oh my yeah. god, seriously. Yeah. Right. 61 nothing. Sodak. That's funny. Uh, yeah. That'd be something. Well, my, I'm trying not to be biased as somebody who's going to be in attendance, but I think the Vikings. Yeah, are gonna, exactly. Have a good. Time. I think the Vikings are going to put up 55, and that the, they'll give up uh, <laughs> 54. So 55, 54. No, I'm kidding. Uh, in all seriousness, I'm going to say, what? I'm going to say, I'm going to say 37 to 30. Oh wow, high scoring. It could be. You went yeah, high scoring like last now, game. I feel man. like now yeah. I'm a little yeah. low scoring in the prediction. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. Okay, there you go. I don't think Something. we're allowed to score over 34 points. That's, That's true, true. Right? I don't think we're allowed in. in yeah. I don't remember the last time. Did we do it this year? 34 <laughs> against Arizona was our high, I believe. 34? Okay. Well, it took us forever to get over 30 or to get to 30. It was like week six or seven or something like that. I also don't know that we're not allowed to give up at least 24 points either. So all these 10s and 17s, I don't know that that's That's true. Be. I know. <laughs> Defense, you know, come but. on. They're, they know that the purple pitchforks are on their butt. So they better be ready. Six field goals by Joseph. Yeah. There we go. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's it could be high team. scoring now. It could be like maybe 28, 27 Vikings like, or something like that. As long as we come out of there with a W, we'll have the division and then we can. Uh, that's right. Get the job done. Get it done. Get it done. Let's get it done. Yeah. With and all we're that. Play, we're playing on Saturday against Jeff Saturday, right? So is it Jeff? Jeff Saturday. Yes, it's Jeff oh Saturday. man, and that's crazy. Is that, too, where does that work in your Saturdays. prediction? Yeah, <laughs> we're wild. playing a football Hopefully team. Hopefully, that doesn't throw Kirk off either, because it's yeah. going to be on Saturday. We don't we're need to go a down football that road. Game against a football team in a football stadium in a day that ends in Y. Exactly. Uh, Just go, go do your job. Who cares? Right. Well. Anything else? Last comments here, Dave, and then I'll say last comments for our special guest, Jade, before we wrap this here. Let you get a little break in before you uh, 
tap in with rap because i'm sure he's got something for you i'm sure oh, he'll yeah. try to get underneath your skin within the first 10 <laughs> seconds of the show that was like the first second of the show the last one we did <laughs> on funny. sunday but I, I don't know what he has in store for me That's but yeah hey jade thanks for stepping in thanks uh, for having me. look many yes, time yes, i appreciate thank it you. thank you thank you now go thank over you. to her go over to another tab put sports and stars <laughs> with jade and play all click play Thank all and Thank just you. marathon all night while you're marathon. sleeping man you can even mute it just mute it marathon mute, yeah. mute I, I tell we people say that all the time to, to me yeah. Dude, to i tell it. people do that all the time to me just mute yeah. it yes yeah, just, just put it on it your computer <laughs> and mute you it listen to a word i said just right exactly all. you don't even have to agree hate watch it do it just whatever play all just go over yeah. there and hit play all all of you thank who are listening you, you can listen yeah, to it thank and, you. and hate everything i say and you can leave me 72 comments about how wrong i am i don't care just right exactly <laughs> it all helps the algorithm yeah well jade thanks again for joining us we very do much appreciate thanks for it. having me guys time. i really appreciate it it's fun One to be here time. this is under the lights uh i am justin with purple and gold for dave days he is dave at minnesota sports talk she is jade at sports and stars with jade please go to all the channels hit subscribe Leave your comments. Share this with your friends. Dave is going to be back over on the Purple Code here shortly. So he's going to have, once again, his back-to-back -back Tuesday night uh, two-step here. And I'm sure that he and Rap will once again get into it because, you know, I don't know if they're going to go full Skip Bayless and uh, Shannon Sharp. <laughs> oh, that's, who he, that's, who he thinks he, that's who he thinks we are. Oh, that's funny. Comparison. Well, the, okay. What was Skip Bayless? What was the guy ESPN and Skip Bayless was with before? Stephen A. Smith. He thinks he's Stephen A. Smith, and I'm Skip Bayless. Do I? Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> wasn't uh, wasn't Jenny Taft on there? I have to come in and be Jenny. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. There you go. You I'll, I'll the, just sit in the background and uh, you know eat some popcorn or something. Because, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, me too. Yeah. Thanks everybody for joining us. We very do much appreciate it. Keep it tuned here to Purple and Gold for Days Minnesota Sports Talk, and if you don't already, Sports and Stars with Jade. Next Thank Tuesday you. night, Paul Krause, fingers crossed, Vikings yeah, legend, all-time NFL leader in interceptions. <laughs> He'll be joining nice. us as well. Thanks, everybody. You have a great rest of your evening. Stay warm. Stay safe. If you're in Minnesota, make sure you got some de-icer or you got your snowblowers because at the end of the day, tomorrow morning, it might be a touch bit slick out there. So everybody stay safe. Thanks again kindly for everybody. Skull Vikes, and have a good night. Skull Vikes.